wind jammers, that originally was a derogatory term when steam engines were taking over the cargo carrying on the water. And so boats that were still trying to make it under sail were called wind jammers by the steam guys as they motored by. And then uh, in about 1938 they started, they took some of these old schooners and started taking passengers out in Camden, Maine. Took the term wind jammers and uh, turned it into meaning taking passengers out in traditional boat. Camden is unbelievable. It's, a, it's the perfect harbor to run out of because it's so protected and all the schooners that are in there, that could easily be 100 years ago, carrying cargo and loading up their hulls, take down to Boston, take granite down to Boston. Camden is quite a little harbor. The Louis R. French was built in 1871 by the French brothers, uh, and they named it after their dad. It's always carried cargo, carried cargo right up to 1971. In the early 70s, they uh, outfitted it to take out passengers, and we take out 22 passengers. And we do three, four, five, and six day trips all summer long. Every trip is a little different. The people are different, the weather is different, the wind is different. Uh, that's what makes it exciting for me, is the yes. changes. Excellent. Out are we ready, Gore? We want the passengers to participate in everything we do. We do it all by hand. There's no engines, there's no winches, so uh, we get people hauling up lines, trimming sails, furling sails. If you want to steer, you come right back here and, and take the wheel from me. That's part of the participation on a, on a boat like this. Is uh, Part of the fun is getting everyone involved in all the activities. So it's just part of the fun. A lot of people just sit uh, once we get going and, uh, and just sit back, grab a book or knitting or conversation. Everyone kind of finds their own spot on deck and settles in. This is the perfect spot to sail around in, in that there are so many islands, so you don't get that deep ocean swell. Uh, that people fear with seasickness. Um, it's all very protected, but you still have the winds, and that's why so many of these traditional vessels have congregated here, is that it's the perfect cruising grounds. A lot of people consider this Maine to be the best cruising grounds in the world, because you still get the good, the good breezes, but you don't have the, the ocean roll. Yes, the brave do go swimming. We, we use the word refreshing when we go swimming. To, uh, it's uh, the Gulf of Maine, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, but it's, it feels good. Everything is fresh cooked every morning, fresh breads, fresh desserts. Salt water seems to stir up appetites, and so there's always plenty of it. And, uh, and then we have the lobster bake one night. Uh, all you can eat lobsters on the beach. It's a highlight of every trip. Isolated island, we anchor right in a cove. We, all, we drop the two small rowboats and row ashore. Light a fire up there and uh, in a big pot, steam up 60, 70 pounds of lobsters, hot dogs, hamburgers, corn, chip, dips, Voila! veggies, the whole thing. And we just sit there right on the beach and, uh, and eat lobsters. Still, you betcha. Oh, man. Butter? Butter. Remember, there is plenty more where this came from, so come back, get seconds, thirds. Oh. It's always a highlight of every trip. <laughs> Lobster and corn? Yeah. The Windjam Association has 14 vessels in it. The association organizes a couple events each year where we can all get together and sail in tandem, which can be quite a sight, uh, usually 10, 12 boats in close quarters sailing near each other. This week is the uh, Rockland Breakwater Sail Parade, which at Rockland is a town with a long breakwater and a lighthouse on the end, and we all sail by that. Just a little, little event we try to do. We did the schooner race two weeks ago. We do a GAM, which is when all the schooners get together and, and raft up. I mean, you can walk from boat to boat, which is a very popular trip. People like the, like to see. That's usually 15 schooners or so all tied up. It's... You can't see that anywhere else in the world. I think almost anyone can enjoy this, this type of vacation. Uh, if you like being outside, if you, if you like the water, if you've never seen the water, it's a different type of vacation. It's not something you can do anywhere else in the world or in the, in the country. What makes Maine so unique? It's certainly the coast. It's the islands. It's, it's the lack of people. It's the lack of uh, buildup on the coast. It's still, this is how it looked when the Louis R. French was launched and they sailed up down east. 
this is it looked exactly the same. That lighthouse was there, Isla Ho was there. There's no big mansions, there's no hotels dotting the coastline. It's it's a throwback. The main coast is a throwback, and, and uh, I think that's that's what makes it special for me. I think different people come up here for different reasons, but it's it's having sailed up and down the coast quite a bit. It's very different than other coasts, uh, and and. You just can't see it unless you come up here. People seem to love it. I get a lot of positive feedback about the trips, about being out here, about... They're just amazed, I think, once you step away from the dock, about, about the whole experience. Um, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe what it is. What, it's the sum of all the small things that we do out here, I think, that is what people like. The trip from day one to day three or day four, or day six, whatever, how long the trip we're doing, it's amazing because some people, I can see they get on board and they think, what am I about to get into? And then by the last day they say, do we have to go in? Do we have to go in? I don't want to go back. <laughs> I think almost anyone can enjoy this, this type of vacation, uh, this area. It's, you can't get it any place else.